Hey folks, David Fine here from Watch Your Lip. If you're anything like me, you're in late July, all through the month of August, and you're on the beaches of Southeast Florida, and you're anxiously awaiting the fall mullet run. And so, uh, guys, what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm gonna give you guys just some quick tips on how to prepare for the mullet run. Uh, I wanna show you guys how to fish it. Um, you know, there's some guys that have a whole lot of uh, expensive gear that, you know, like thousand dollar setups, you know, tsunamis and van stalls and all that. But guys, you don't necessarily need a thousand dollar reel to fish the mullet run. So I uh, guess what I'm gonna show you is just how to get ready, how to get set up so that we can be prepared for this annual event that everybody so drastically desires. You guys, check out the video and we'll talk a little bit about the fall mullet run. All right, guys, so it, right now it's mid-July and even though there's a couple mullet showing up here and there, little tiny pods, you'll start seeing little pods of two or three or, or even up to 10, that's not the mullet run. The mullet run starts up in the Carolinas and works its way down the coast. That'll happen anywhere between the very end of August, mostly September, and the beginning of October. And so it varies. There's a lot of different environmental conditions that will uh, matter on how and when the schools come down. Like if we have strong northeast winds that come in, that'll push the mullet on shore and it can be a lot more thick and a lot more, uh, there's a lot more bluefish and mackerel in that thing when those, we get those strong northeast winds. But if we get any kind of tropical systems that will come up the coast, I mean, that's the peak of hurricane season, right? The middle of September, peak of hurricane season, when those tropical storms come in, and a lot of times they'll kind of come up to the Florida coast and go up and push everything up. When that happens, guys, a lot of times the mullet run gets disturbed, gets broken up, it gets slowed down, and, and, and you just never really know when the mullet are gonna be here and when they're gonna be thick. And so you gotta keep, oh. Big school of what? Filters. Filters. All right. My son, my son just got pilchered. I love my son. He's, he's, we're catching pilchers. July, even August, we're, we're fishing mostly pilchers, guys. Uh, right now, I've got a couple crabs out. I've got three crabs. We're actually permit fishing right now. Fall mullet run. When the mullets start running down, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to look. At, it almost is worth downloading Instagram, just in case you're not a social media person. Get an Instagram account and just start following local fishermen on the southeast coast because as soon as the mullet run starts to happen, the social media starts blowing up with images of snook and tarpon and things like that and big jacks and black tip sharks from the beach. And so uh, it's uh, th that's all you really need at, at an Instagram account. And you follow the right people, you're going to start seeing when they show up because those things start to get posted. Uh, with regularity. You can listen to some of, you follow some Facebook groups. You, there's, there's some great Facebook groups. Lorenzo just caught more pilchards. I love that. We're, we're fishing. We're going to try and catch some snook here today. But the best thing to do, guys, uh, a lot of times by the time you hear that the action is hot, by the time you get down to the beach, it's not. So the best thing to do is actually get out there, hit the pavement yourself, or actually hit the sand yourself. And, and just get to the beach. and Or if you have some spies, like I got a couple friends that live near the shore and I have them watching and say, hey guys, if you're on the beach and you start seeing mullet schools in the morning or afternoon, hey, give me a holler, shoot me a text so I know so we can get down there. You saw my son, he's got a five foot cast net. You know, there's some guys that throw a much larger net. There's some guys that throw an, uh, an eight foot net or a 10 foot net. You really don't need that large of a net when you're fishing the mullet run, guys. The mullet, uh, when they're thick and they're schooled up, a five foot net is really all you need because, you know, we've got our little, let me show you what I have for a live well system. You know, we have our bucket here. We've got some, we've got some pilchards here. I forget how many gallons this is. This is like a, like a 20 gallon uh, bucket right here. And we'll put an aerator on that, just a bubbler. And, and all we'll do, like in a, in a thing like this, we'll catch maybe a dozen, maybe two dozen baits in a big bucket like this. And we'll put a couple bubblers in it and just keep it fresh. We'll try to keep it, you know, you, with, with mullet guys, you want to make sure that your water is kept fresh because mullet are very dirty. They, they throw out a lot of urea, a lot of toxins through their skin when they're stressed out. So if you catch them in a cast net and you put them in a bucket like this, 
even if you have a bubbler on them, if you put too many baits in here, they're going to poison themselves. They're going to pee in the water and they're going to die very quickly. So you're going to want to change out your water uh, from time to time if you have a bucket like this. You can use a five gallon bucket with a bubbler. That's easier to carry. You can carry that with one hand. Um, my son's bringing back bait. That's awesome. Oh, that's Matthew. What's up, Matthew? Um, I'm good. You catching bait? Yeah. Let me see one of these baits that you got here. Let me see what you got. All right, let me see what he's got here. All right, so guys, you know, earlier in the summer, whoop, pilchards. Hi, Michael. What's up, buddy? The net broke? They're all getting out. They're all getting out. All right, Lorenzo's, Lorenzo's pancaking the net. Um, guys, this bait right here, as small as it might be, this little bait right here, bef the before the mullet run comes, this little bait right here is all you need for some snook and tarpon. And, uh, oh, I'm sweating. Mullet run, guys, mullet are very toxic fish. And when they... When you put them in a bucket like this, make sure you're changing the water out with regularity. Make sure that you are not putting too many in a bucket. Like even in a, hey, uh, uh, Matthew, make sure you save all the dead ones, okay? We're gonna snapper fish after the sun goes down. Mangrove snapper come right here. We've got a cool video on that, by the way. In the mullet run, you don't wanna overdo it. You can be overzealous, you can get a net. If you have a five or six foot net, you can actually catch 100 or 200 baits in one cast. That's how thick they can be. You don't want to do that guys you want to make sure that you're respecting these fish and you're respecting the the schools and you're only killing what you need for bait and so what i would do is i wouldn't keep any more than a you know between five and a dozen in a five gallon bucket depending on the size of the baits you know if you're fishing like a little finger mullet like this big you might be able to keep a dozen in there but if you're getting the nice big like six to nine inch uh big silver mullet for your big tarpon and stuff you know, three or four of them in a five gallon bucket will last a little while, and you might be able to keep six or seven of them in, in a bucket like that. Um, so, so guys, that's the deal with, you know, bring a cast net, and you can catch all the bait you want. If the mullet are there, you're gonna find them, you're gonna catch them. Um, some guys use, will we'll take a, a, a reel like this, and they'll get a big weighted treble hook, if, especially if the bait is out far, They'll throw their they'll throw their uh, weighted treble hook out into the school and just yank it through the school and snag your bait and then bring it in, put the bait on, throw it back out. That's how some guys do it. Um, depending on the wind, the mullet may be further out. Like if we have a west wind and the ocean's nice and calm, it might be nicer for fishing. But a lot of times, oh, we're on. All right, guys, we got Ryan. You got fish. All right, we got a fish, guys. Let me show you this. All right, guys, we got fish on in our mullet run video before the mullet run. Ryan, what were you using for bait, buddy? Uh, glass nose pinnacle. We have a glass nose. One of those weird glass nose things. Oh, yeah, snook, snook, bring the net. Okay, Ryan Roll is on a nice snook, man. How's that feel, bud? Feels good. Feel good? Feel good? Come on, baby. Yeah. Take it easy on him. Take it easy on him. He's coming. Nice one. Oh big, my God. big snook. Huge snook. Big Dude, snook. That might be a 40-incher. That's a, that's a 36-incher plus. All right, where is he? He's close. Oh, watch out, watch out, watch out. Whoop. Woo! Get under him! Get under him! Whoa! Oh, that's Whoa! A 40 that's a 40 yeah. Whoa! Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh my god! 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 <laughs> 36. He's about 36. Woo! All right. That is fat. That's a big one. All right, Ryan, get him up. Pick him up. All right, guys, get behind him. Get behind him. Get behind him. Let the sun hit that fish. Let's, let's go get him in the water. Gorgeous. He's a briefcase. All right, get him in the water. Let him breathe a little bit. 
my god. <laughs> that is a monster, dude. Oh monster, god. monster fish. All right, let's let, let's let this girl go. Big breeding snook. She's probably ready. Let's just let her swim out her hands. There she goes, guys. Oh my gosh. Boom. <laughs> Boom. Oh my god. My PV. Heck yeah, bro. Ryan, congratulations, buddy. And there you have it, guys. Sorry, 10 minutes later, uh, I got my vlog got interrupted. Ryan had to interrupt my vlog with a 36-inch snook on a glass nose. So um, that just goes to show you, you know, mullet run. A lot of people wait for the mullet run to start fishing, but there's not even hardly any pilchards here. Ryan had a glass nose out. He just uses whatever bait we could find and hooked that beautiful big female snook on a glass nose. So. Um, guys, back to the mullet run. A lot of guys, you know, talking about using a uh, live bait. A lot of a lot of people use artificial lures, which is a great way to do it. When we have those strong northeast winds uh, and and it's pushing that stuff and it's really sloppy and nasty and all the bait is jammed up on the shore, that's the time when a lot of the bluefish and a lot of the uh, Spanish mackerel and big jacks are crashing on the baits right up on the shoreline. You can actually reach them. You use a, like a crocodile spoon or an alligator spoon or one of those types of things or any weighted lure that looks like a mullet mimic, you can throw those out and have some really great success, um, you know, fishing artificial lures. Uh, spool techs are good. A lot of people use spool techs on the jetty. Huh? Tell me about the good news. Okay. So Sophia says the, there's like millions of bait out like where the They're buoy is. They're a little bit is. further out there? Where the buoy is. Okay. All right, guys, as far as tackle goes, I'll tell you what, if you, if you really want to get into it, all you really need, depends on the size of the mullet you're using, I would use a 4.0 offset um, owner Mutu light circle hook, okay? So what, what you do is, I love the circle hooks that are offset, the Mutu style, and the reason being is... A lot of these snook, like that snook that Ryan just caught, had the Mutu circle hook, caught him right in the mouth. You don't need to be manning your rod. If you have it set in gear and the fish hits it and it goes, it's going to set the hook on itself. So that's a great hook to use right there, guys. 4-0 Mutu light circle hook by owner. That's the one to go with. Now, I use 40-pound fluorocarbon. Uh, some guys use heavier uh, leader material. Uh, I like to use lighter material because I'm fishing for snook, for tarpon, for jacks. A lot of that stuff, you know, you're going to get toothy things like bluefish and mackerel that bite you off. I, I, I'm not fishing for that stuff. I want snook and tarpon. So I'm using 40-pound fluorocarbon. If you really want to use wire, you can do that but you're gonna probably get less hits on the snook and tarpon. They're just a lot more finicky. Uh, so you have to kind of make a choice. You know, a lot of times I'll bring a, an extra rod, one rigged up with wire, and if the bluefish are really pounding, I'll have one set up with a wire leader and we can throw the wire. Uh, but that's all the tackle you really need. So you can go really light and just use, just get some hooks, get some leader material. What you'll do is you'll splice your, your, your leader material to your line with a double uni knot get like a four foot section uh, of, or maybe a little bit longer, maybe six foot, if you're fishing for tarpon, of your 40 pound fluorocarbon and tie it directly onto your, your hook. And that's all you need. Uh, if you're using a weight, some guys use the big pinch weights, like half ounce pinch weights. That way you can take it on and off. I like to flat line baits whenever possible. So there's no weight necessary. I, I just have a, just your hook, your leader, your double uni right to your line, all right? So uh, if it's really rough, rough conditions, you know, we might use a slider rig and I can show you that in a little bit, but a slider rig, in fact, let me show you that now. All right, so guys, I have a squitter combo here, a pen squitter. I got 20 pound test monofilament on it. This one's an eight foot crowder rod. I have a butt extension on here. It's actually used for pier fishing. But what we do with this guys, I've got this on a slider rig. And so when you're using a slider rig, I'll show you how this works. All right, so when you're using a slider rig, guys, here's what you got. So I've got my 4.0 offset Mutu lightweight hook, 40 pound leader, probably a four foot leader. 
Then the leader is hooked up to a swivel right here. And then we have a bead. Then we have one of these really cool little slider things with the clip. And that's what we put our pyramid sinker on, or you can use a Sputnik weight. Uh, I use a pyramid most of the time. Sputniks during the spring when there's a lot of seaweed. And the reason being is when, when the fish hits it, if you put it in free spool, they're gonna take line out and the weight is gonna stay. Let me see if I can show this to you guys how this works. The fish is gonna take line out and the weight is gonna stay right on the ground. And that helps because the fish, if it's on click or free spool, the fish is not gonna see, feel the tension of the line. So it, you know, the size of the weight matters. It depends on the size of the line that you're gonna use. It depends on the amount of current, amount of seaweed, and all those conditions. Uh, if you're using 20 pound test, you're gonna wanna use anywhere between a two ounce and a four ounce. I wouldn't go any heavier than a four. Uh, sometimes if you're using a heavier line, you can go up to six or eight, but um, that's about all you need, guys. Or, or some guys use, just use pinch weight. So uh, that's a slider rig, guys. And I love the slider rigs because when you're done fishing, you just pinch this thing off like this right here. Okay. You, you, un, you undo this little clip. You slide your weight off. And your line, your line can wrap up on your reel, just like this. And now, guys, I'm I'm uh, I'm ready to walk away. I just gotta put, I just gotta put my weight that I just unclipped, put that in my bucket, and I'm ready to go. And so this this rod is gonna be ready to bring in a vehicle without a big lead weight clanking around. All right, guys. So as far as tackle goes, you saw my pen squitter. You can get a squitter for about, I forget what they are. They're like 80 bucks or something like that. Um, and your Crowder rod's a little bit more expensive. It's probably around the $200 range. Uh, you don't need to go that expensive. I like fishing a pen fin spin fisher. Uh, these go for about 180 bucks. This is a, what rod is this? This is a power stick. Uh, I believe I paid a hundred bucks for this rod. So this combo is 300 and you know, 40 bucks for line, you get some braided line put on there. And then, so so you don't want to skim, okay, guys, because if you're gonna fish the mullet run, you're gonna encounter very large fish. You saw that snook, that snook was 20 pounds, but there's a 100 pound tarpon, 150 pound tarpon, 40 pound jack, dude, a 40 pound jack will crush a reel that's not set up. You want a, a, a reel with a decent drag, with good line, your knots have got to be good. If it's not all set up, then, you know, you're going to lose fish, especially if you're into the tarp and into the jacks. So I've got, this is a 12 foot rod. Uh, and, um, you know, I use that to really whip the bait out uh, past the surf. And so you can, you don't have to buy the $100 rod. You can get an ugly stick for like 65, 70 bucks, a surf fishing ugly stick. And you can, if you don't want to do the $200 spin fisher, you can do the pen battle for about 120 bucks. Same, like you can get the 6,000 to the 8,000 series, and that should do you fine. I would fish anywhere between 20 and 40 pound test, depending on the size of your reel. Uh, but guys, that's about it. I mean, I don't have a whole lot more uh, to share. The mullet run is, is awesome. You gotta put your time in. A lot of times you gotta do your leg work and get out there and find your bait find your schools of fish and get fishing so guys hope you enjoyed the video hope you learned something uh this is pretty generic information glad you got to see a big snook caught in my mullet run video uh but uh we are fishing and guys we can't wait for the mullet run this year 2022 we're gonna see what we get last year we got some snook we got some tarpon we got some black tip sharks so much fun love the mullet run guys like the video don't forget to subscribe Till next time get out there and let's catch some fish. Take care now.